thousand dollars. So I'm a you know I'm a Yankees fan, but this has nothing to do with that doll. That bear, my my best pal in childhood, you've heard, you, you've heard me reference many times, Howie Decker. Um, I remember being at his house, sleeping over his house, and he had this this Yankees sort of Babe Ruth teddy bear. And um, when I started collecting toys, that was one of the grails. That was one of like the memory grails. Like, oh, this kid that I just loved had this bear. I have to find it. And I remember that the bear's name is Bear Ruth. Okay, so um, I don't know, 84, 85, this company put out these teddy bears and I went on eBay and found them. And he was cheap. He was like 17 bucks. Um, but, you know, blast from the past. Why do I have Dolly Pops? No idea. You go through some old photo albums of mine. You go to Christmas 1982, maybe. Little six-year-old me, seven-year-old me. And next to me is my five-year-old sister. And uh, I remember we got, uh, we got a Santa visit that night. Uh, and Santa gave me the uh, Dukes of Hazzard police car, which was a Sears exclusive, which is worth like a thousand bucks today. And he gave my sister a Dolly Pops. And in the picture, she's holding her Dolly Pops. And this is the Dolly Pops that my sister had when she was five years old. Um, I must have come across the picture. I saw it. And then I was at a flea market. And the guy had Dolly Pops sitting there. And I had to grab this. I have no idea what this is. I have no idea. The Knickerbocker Company. I've got some Annie, Little Orphan Annie figures that were made from the Knickerbocker Company. I have no idea what this company is. I have no idea what Dolly Pops are. I just know that in 1983, um, my five-year-old sister was uh, unwrapping this from Santa in a picture that I have, and now I got the Dolly Pops. So that's special. Um, oh, here's your giant fur skin. <laughs> I guess I do have them. Uh, so here's your, here's your super gigantic fur skin with authentic Timberlands. These are uh, little midget Timberlands. Got your pound puppies. I do not have a pound puppy in box. I would like one. Um, got your Elvin, Simon, and Theodore uh, figures, plushies, back there if you can see. I think, uh, get yourself in there. He wants to phone home again. Yeah, that, that E.T. is disintegrating before our eyes. <laughs> I see it. Yeah. Help me, please get me back home. I'm melting. I'm dying on Earth. Elliot. <sighs> For some reason, Christmas 1986, I saw him in a toy catalog. And had to have him. <gasps> had to have him. Oh, my. Uh, I don't know why. I wanted this so bad in 1986, but I did, and I got him, and, uh... You know, when Casey's on the show, we should put him right next to him, because he's terrified of, of Casey, puppets like that. Casey! <laughs> Come here, Casey! <laughs> um, I don't know why I needed this so badly, uh, but I did, and um, he's long gone. And, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago at a toy show, I saw him sitting on a table for ten bucks. In fact, I, uh, I, I did not buy him for $25. I got him cheaper than that. Um, Charlie McCarthy, he came with a hat. He came with a top hat, came with some, some shoes, and he came with a monocle. That is not part of our lives today, but... Why the hell not, you cheap bastard? Uh, Charlie McCarthy. Love me some Cabbage Patch Kids stuff, so got the Cabbage Patch Kid potty chair. Got the Cabbage Patch Kids uh, table mate that you, you put your Cabbage Patch Kid up to the table that she can eat her dinner. Got uh, Teddy, Ruck and, Teddy Ruxman's pal Grubby. Why, why should he be alone when Grubby needs to come home? <laughs> Hi! No collection is complete without complete. completing it. Without complete, completing. completing the correction <laughs> is not correct until you complete a correction. Uh, 
Uh, an underrated, underrated toy line from my boys at Remco. Uh, the Karate Kid line. Uh, this uh, captures both Karate Kid 1 and 2. Um, unfortunately, the blockbuster Karate Kid Part 3 <laughs> is not represented in this toy line, but we've got uh, figures from two and uh, 1 and 2, including the highly sought-after referee figure. Uh, not sought after. It's like, it's like five bucks. Um, but that's that's the complete line uh, with all of their clothes. It does not come... So each figure came with a... Awesome, like... A, an accessory. Like yeah, a, you can... Yeah, like a karate tool. Like, build, a, like, like a weapon. A block. Yeah, I don't even know how to just... Yeah, like a block of ice. A and wall. Then, exactly. And, and so... And they would smash it. You'd have the figure, you know, the mechanism... And, and Daniel Sun would crush through the block of ice. That's awesome. Um, and they came with every figure. Uh, those I'd probably only find if I bought each figure carded. That's not going to happen. I'm complete. That's it. There's my Karate Kid toy line. Now this is the competition center, which was basically a piece of cardboard with a red mat over it. Okay, cardboard, ladies and gentlemen, with a red mat over it. Um, there are two other playsets, two or three other playsets actually. I think there might be three uh, that are much bigger. Uh, high priced. Um, am I on the lookout for them? No. Uh, if I find it for twelve dollars at a garage sale or one dollar, then I'll get it. But uh, I mean, they're about one hundred ninety nine, you know, two hundred fifty dollars for these play sets, and I don't have any room for them. So I'm I'm happy with the Karate Kid Competition Center, where you too can create your own challenge. These are some reanimation. Uh, Figures of the Karate Kid, eh, you know, I don't love that line, but there they are. Uh, Chuck Norris, got your complete Karate Commandos line there. Uh, might be missing a weapon or two. It's not that I'm missing them, that they're, they're upstairs in the five-year-old's bedroom. Uh, inside that Karate Commandos Corvette box is the Karate Corvette. Uh, tucked away nicely in that box. And if you recall... Mm -hmm. If you recall, I bought that Karate Commandos box, uh, boxed car at a toy show for like 60 bucks. And then about a month later, found it at Savers for $4.99. And I ended up, uh, ended up flipping. I don't think I even, I don't know if I resold that. I don't know. Because I have one in that box and my kid has one upstairs. So I didn't buy a third car, so I don't know. I don't know what I did with that. I can't remember. My Dukes of Hazard set. You've heard the story about that Dukes of Hazard. That's Mego. Um, that gigantic car is a piggy bank. Um, these came in a sort of a uh, demolition set. So they had this and the cop car and a track and a ramp and some barrels. And you would jump through the barrels. I think it was barnyard set or something like that. I don't know. But I only have one of those. Um, these are not Dukes of Hazard, but these are near and dear to my childhood heart. These are called key cars. Uh, so basically, you stick the key in here like this. Uh, it doesn't work now, but yeah. you, you press. You would press down, and it would the key would pull out, and this car would go flying. Uh, so key cars. Got your key, got your car. Just a blast from the 80s. Uh, one, of those, one of those things that, like, you know, you forget you had until you see them. And you go, oh, my God, key cars. Um, we got a few neat little Dukes of Hazard things. Got this Dukes of Hazard watch, uh, LCD watch. And believe it or not, these are so cheap. So these, I don't know, like, somebody must have found some old stock and just put a thousand of these up on eBay. And you can get this for like six bucks. This this vintage, classic, unused, untouched, Dukes of Hazard quartz watch. So cheap because somebody found a million of them and just pretty is cool. reselling them. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, that cop car right there is probably the closest that I'm gonna get to the Roscoe Pico train cop car. Uh, the original was a Sears exclusive that um, you'd never even see it on eBay to, to tell you how much it would go for. 
Um, that and the um, Daisy Jeep, forget about it. You're not, you're not bringing that into your collection. Well, some of us are. I'm not. Uh, this, I'm so torn about this set. Uh, I love this show, but I just feel like these, these figures take up a shelf that so many other things could be sitting on. Um, that is one playset shy of a complete collection of playsets, um, but none of them are even close to complete. The boxes are torn apart. Um, basically, they're just there for the boxes. Um, so, I, you know, but the resale value on this, nothing. Nothing. Um, these carded figures, I mean, you could grab these figures for five bucks. These are like Tales from the Crypt figures. These are like, you know... Um, Return of the Force or whatever that the, the nineteen Power of the Force, Power of the Force ninety four release ninety five. Yeah. You can get them for you know eight bucks. Yeah. These, these are nothing. These are cheap. Um, but I love them. I mean, because I, I I just love the show. And if there is any show on the planet that needs a complete DVD release, it's American Gladiators. I don't know what what we're waiting for here, but these are cool. Uh, they're okay. Not my favorite. They take up a shelf. Um, a big sports fan when I was a kid. Still am, kind of. But um, starting lineup, man. I mean, they... Uh, Kenner. Kenner starting lineup. I mean, Kenner, what, what did Kenner not do? Um, Kenner starting lineups basically started in uh, mid-80s and with baseball and football and, uh, and basketball. I think baseball and football were first and basketball came, up, came around after that. But just, you know... Uh, I was a Dallas Cowboys fan growing up as a kid. Got a couple Dallas Cowboys. Got Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith and Herschel Walker. Uh, this is the 1992 uh, USA Dream Team. Um, like the greatest basketball, the greatest Olympic basketball team ever. Um, when they allowed us to take all of our top NBA guys and go play against little, uh, you know, Chinese basketball players. And I think we won every game by like 139 points. And they put out a, uh, a commemorative set. I think I'm probably missing maybe three or four figures um, from the USA 1992 Dream Team, as they were called. We got the starting line of Talking Baseball. I have no idea what that is. Um, saw it at a thrift store. Got it for three bucks. It's beautiful. Um, you didn't use the figures with it. I think you just... It's some kind of electronic baseball game. There were cards. You played with cards. I have no idea what it does. It's in there. There's some cards in there. I don't know if it works. I don't care. But it sits there on my Kenner starting lineup shelf. Uh, below that, we got some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, that is it for that line. That is uh, Series 1 and, um, and most of Series 2, some of Series 2. Pretty much complete with their accessories. Um, but that's enough for me. You know, the, the line got so deep with so many weird characters that were never even in the cartoon yeah, or anything. Didn't really give a crap about it. Yeah, they, they didn't, they didn't mean much. So the core characters are there. Um, the ones that you will recognize if you were a fan of the cartoon, you know, Rat King and Casey Jones and Baxter Stockman and Krang, they're there. Um, no need to get, I mean, some of series two, I could see myself getting, uh, Ace Duck, um, What's the crocodile? Uh, fart hammer. Fart hammer. Uh, Bankin and Rath um, has a figure. Sandy Ravage. Sandy Ravage has a figure. Yeah. T Bob has a figure. Mm. Christian Hafer has a figure. Oof. I could see myself getting those. Um, but this is it for the turtle line. Uh, you know the story on this, guys. You've seen. Uh, get down there with the camera. You've seen. You've seen this in some one of my favorite episodes of me and. 80s Revolution Junior. Uh, I bought that Technodrome, or Dome. Technodrome. Technodrome, at a toy, sh <laughs> at a um, at a Goodwill for two dollars and ninety nine cents, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. Two dollars and ninety nine cents. And um, the fools. Yeah, and I brought it home and I put it in my car with every intention of reselling it, and I foolishly put my child in the car, and he saw that sitting in the front seat and lost his mind. Uh, so this lived up in his room for a little while. Uh, I took it away, he sort of lost interest. I brought it back down here with every intention of putting it back up on eBay to sell, and I just can't do it. 
No. It'll it'll get me about eighty dollars. Don't do it. But I just can't do it. So it's sitting there, and it's that's where it's going to stay. Ooh, we're halfway done here. I think you you holding up okay? Uh huh. All right, we got the uh, we got your Friday the Thirteenth Jason mask. I have no idea which movie this is from. NECA. Um, I don't know, two thousand something. I have no idea what movie that's from. I don't care. It's my it's my Friday the Thirteenth Jason mask. Um. We got your Chucky doll. I don't know. I, I know there's better Chucky dolls than that. Uh, I don't know where that came from or, or what line it is, but there's my Chucky doll. Uh, got some of these gimmicky Freddy things for Christmas. Again, from LJN. Uh, we got the squishies. We got the, the, I guess this is a giant squishy. This is a little squishy. Uh, we got the Nightmare on Elm Street, Street uh, Deluxe Edition Replica Glove. From Rubies. <laughs> that famous toy company, Rubies. Got the Hellraiser pinhead doll. Company. Yeah. Got the uh, Hellraiser pinhead doll that I grabbed from Toys R Us uh, several months ago. We got your Matchbox Talking Freddy Krueger doll. This is my little baby Boglin who is leaking, as you can see. Falling apart. The Boglin has fallen apart. He's got a hole in him. He's sticky. He's melting. He's oh, he's melding together. This is not good, guys. I need a replacement Boglin. I need me a full-size caged Boglin. My birthday's coming. Uh, I love these figures. I love these NECA Friday the Thirteenth and and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street figures. Um, I got the Atari Twenty Six Hundred video game version of Leatherface back there. Uh, we got a couple of uh, couple of figures that I picked up at, uh, at, at Retrocon when, when NECA was doing a very discounted sale. Got this uh, Nightmare 5 uh, comic book Freddy, if you will. Got that, uh, got that little character from a movie that Mr. Seaver showed me. Beautiful. There goes the, there goes the Boglin falling down. Now, uh, we've talked about pop figures. I, I likes me some pop figures. There's uh, some horror figures from the Funko Pop brand. And those will continue on the next shelf. A few more uh, horror Funko Pop figures. But also you'll see one of, uh, one of my favorite underrated easy to complete lines, the Tales from the Crypt Keeper figures. There's only about, well, I need two more. Uh, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's eight. Uh, I need the Wolfman or the Wolf and uh, one more. I don't even know, but I need two more. So if you guys see what's, see what I got and see what I don't got, send them to me. I'll send you something in return. I promise. <laughs> Uh, yeah. back, back there is some, uh, loot crate stuff or horror crate stuff that I picked up at a garage sale. Uh, somebody was selling all their horror crate stuff. So I got a little stuffed, uh, leather face figure. I got a Freddy spitball back there. Uh, coming down, we continue the, uh, the NECA line. That, uh, that Freddy from Nightmare 2 is the most recent, uh, NECA figure that I picked up. Got some, uh, re-release Mad Balls. And those little wind-up Mad Balls, you saw how we got those at RetroCon. Those were, what, four for five bucks or something? Something like that. Something that was awesome. beautiful. I uh, got those Best Buy exclusive horror Mad Balls. And you cannot have a horror shelf without Scooby-Doo. Scooby Gang! Scooby-Doo figures. Got that Gremlins 2 NECA figure sitting there looking all nice. Down below we got a uh, little guy I like to call My Pet Monster. Uh, you know the story on him. He's in great shape. I thank Christopher Seaver for passing on him. I did give him first dibs since he found it, of course, and he said, no, 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 you take it. Uh, you can take a look at that's G.I. Joe there and that uh, Ben Cooper Halloween mask. And then one of my favorite items I got for Christmas in 2017, the Freddy Krueger uh, Ben Cooper I, yeah, it's College Village. College Village. That's why Chris is here. I just wanted to say Ben Cooper twice. 
You all right? Okay. You know the story, boys and girls. The, uh... Whoa. You, you stinky? Oh, I got... got you, you can pass out? Got a little dizzy. You can pass out now, Going up you? like that. Oh. You know the story? The Ghostbusters obsession. I'm well in the middle of it. Um, it's happening. You saw when I bought this at RetroCon. And since then, I have grabbed a good chunk of the action figures. We got three out of the four original figures with their proton pack. Um, some of the gimmicky figures, some of the ghost humans. Uh, we've got uh, Super Fright features is complete. Uh, there's an Egon coming in the mail, so that, that Super Fright features is complete. Uh, Fright features is complete, sitting right there, all five figures. We got some of the uh, monster figures in the back there. We got some of the scary humans in the back there. And we have uh, a few figures from, from uh, some of the other lines that I'm, that I'm completing. Uh, this one is called Screaming Heroes, I think. Uh, so there's four more to go. Where's Fearsome Flush? Fearsome <laughs> Flush is coming. I promise. He promises. It's important to you, isn't it? We'll get it. Uh, come on down here. You see, you see one of the Grails right there. That's the Knight 2000, complete with the Hawk. Eh. What you doing? How you doing? We got the Hawk figure. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very good. Mike. <gasps> Michael. Oh, well, look at that. Look at that. Get a get a close up on that gorgeous, gorgeous blue eyed face. Devil. Brandon <laughs> Walsh. Look at that piece of man meat. Uh, those are what? Three out of five 90210 figures? Man, I don't know. And uh, you, <laughs> you did not get the footage of me picking those up, but they were 10 each. Uh, what is that? That's uh, uh, Ecto 3. Ecto-3 in its completeness. We've got uh, Weird Al's head. Look at that. We got... Uh, you're, coming into, you're, you're coming into the area that isn't quite complete. Isn't quite finished. Uh, but we got, uh, we, got your, we got your Weird Al figure whose head keeps falling off. So I'll put him down there. Uh, you guys have seen this bad boy in, in the backdrop of my videos since day one. My beautiful Zenith console TV. And uh, Yeah, let them get a good look at this set. Now, yeah, that we, yeah, now yeah. we can get right in here. And That's like, right. You're, you're taking a look at the 80s Revolution set right here, boys and girls. When you had a console TV like this, you had to decorate it. It was a piece of furniture. So you had your VHS player on there. You had your Nintendo Entertainment System. You had to know what time it was, so you had your digital clock. And you had to sit next to the Sylvester Stallone over-the-top figure. You had so to. he sat on everybody's console television as well. You're, you're bringing them into our world now. Yeah, Mr. man, C. letting them see the all the hard work that we did. Bringing them into our world. There's those muscle figures that I talked about. That beautiful Darth Vader head was a gift from a fan of mine. 